So a lot of people have used burner wallets at events like ETH Denver and wanted to make their own burner wallet afterwards. Maybe they want to run their own event or maybe they just want to add some kind of functionality to the wallet. Now the easiest way to make your own burner wallet is just to go to burnerfactory.com and make one using the website there. But in this video, we're going to show how to use the burner wallet two libraries to make your own wallet using code. Now I've created a starter project on GitHub. If you clone this project and install the packages, then you can skip ahead to this point in the video. The repo is at github.com slash burner dash wallet slash sample dash wallet. So to start off our new project, we're going to create a new React app using create React app. So I'm going to run create React app, my burner. And I'm going to make it using TypeScript. All these libraries are made using TypeScript. I think TypeScript is awesome. Uh, but if you don't like TypeScript, you can do this in plain old JavaScript. Now that we've created this new project, we can CD into that folder. So now we're going to install the main burner wallet NPM packages. The four packages we're going to install are burner wallet slash core, which is the library that handles all our blockchain communication and transaction signing. Burner wallet slash assets, which adds all of our tokens that we can interact with. Burner wallet slash modern UI, which is the main user interface components to the wallet. And burner wallet slash exchange, which is a plugin that will let us exchange between different assets. We'll cover that one in a bit. Now that our packages are installed, we can create our entry point file. So I'm going to go over to the blog post for this tutorial, and I'm going to copy all the code from step three. And I'm going to paste that code in index.tsx. All the code we're going to use to customize this burner wallet is basically all going to go in index.tsx because we're basically just importing a bunch of different modules, configuring them, putting them together. You can see here we're creating a burner core object. We're giving it two different signer objects. We're giving it a few different gateways, which will help it connect to on-chain networks. We've already defined a few assets in exchange and created our burner wallet root component. I'm also going to go ahead and change the title of this wallet to David's wallet. Now you can see we're using the Infura gateway, which will let us connect to mainnet and most test nets. In order to be able to actually connect to Infura, we need an Infura key or a project ID. So I'm going to go log into my Infura account. I'm going to create a new Infura project. Go to view project, and I'm going to copy this project ID. Back in our React project, I'm going to make a new file in the root directory, and I'm going to call that .env. And I set the contents of this to react app in Fira key equals, and then that key that I've just copied. So now we should have everything we need to get a really basic burner wallet up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and run yarn start, which should start my burner wallet on a local port. Cool, it is up and running. Hey, and check that out. I've got a burner wallet and uh, I've actually already got money in it. So the code that we've copied includes xdai, dai, and eth. But let's say we want to add some more assets. The burner wallet slash assets package includes a couple of pre-configured assets. Now let's say I want to add size to this project. I'm going to just import the psi asset and add it to the assets list. And hit save. Cool, and now I have Psy in my wallet as well. But let's say I want to add a asset that's not already defined. I want to add my own ERC20 token. So what I'm going to do is import the ERC20 asset class from the burner wallet slash assets package. And now I'm going to define a new asset. Let's, let's say I want to import the maker token. So I'm going to say constant maker equals new ERC20 asset. Now I'm going to give it a few parameters. It'll have an ID, which is used internally, a name, which is displayed in the app, an address, that's the address of the token contract, and a network, which a network is the chain ID for the chain that our asset's on. Now that I've defined this new asset, I will also add that to the list of assets. Save it, and this should appear. There it is. We've now added the MKR token into our burner wallet. 
So you can use these ERC-20 asset, ERC-777 asset, and native asset classes to define basically any token and add it to your burner wallet. Now the next thing we wanna do is add some plugins. Most functionality that you'd like to add to a burner wallet can be added with plugins. And there's a bunch of plugins that are already built out there. The one plugin that we've already included is this exchange plugin. The exchange plugin gives you an interface to convert between two different kinds of assets. And you can define how these assets are converted by defining some pairs. So the two pairs that we've already included is the XDAI bridge that lets us move between DAI and XDAI. And we've also included one Uniswap pair, which is gonna let us convert between DAI and ETH. Now I'm gonna add one more Uniswap pair for MKR. That'll let us convert between MKR and ETH as well. Cool, so that's how the exchange plugin works, but there's a bunch of other plugins that I think every wallet should include by default, such as the ENS plugin, which will let you resolve and display ENS addresses within the app. The recent accounts plugin will suggest accounts that the user is recently sent to. The ERC-681 plugin will let users scan QR codes that uses the ERC-681 URI scheme. That basically means Ethereum colon slash slash, whatever. And the MetaMask plugin will display a button if users open a burner wallet in their browser and let them activate MetaMask or other Web3 wallets. So burner wallet plugins can do really simple things like adding ENS support to a wallet, but they can also add a lot more complex functionality. So I'm gonna add two plugins that are built by third parties that let us extend the burner wallet even more. The first one I'm gonna add is the link drop plugin. This plugin will let users scan link drop QR codes and claim any tokens that are being distributed with link drop. The other plugin I'm gonna add is the Carbon plugin. Carbon is a credit card on-ramp for crypto. And by adding this plugin, users will be able to purchase crypto with their credit card directly inside of a burner wallet. So I'm gonna add link drop slash burner plugin and burner wallet slash carbon plugin. So now that these plugins are installed, we can go and import them at the top of our index.tsx file, and then we can add them to the plugins array at the bottom. The link drop plugin, we can just construct a new object of, but the carbon plugin takes an API key as a parameter. So we're gonna add that to our .env file as well. Gonna save that file and reload our wallet. So now you can see there's two buttons that have been added to the wallet, a carbon button and a claim button for link drop. If you wanna add even more functionality to a burner wallet, you can build your own plugin, but I'll be covering that in a future post. So this is it, this is our basic burner wallet. The next thing we would do is just compile this and deploy it. If you go to the console and run yarn build or create react app build, then it'll compile this into a bunch of static files that you can deploy on any server. So I hope this was helpful and let me know if you have any questions or issues making your own burner wallet. Cheers.